This is the story of five students and their journey with an eco machine. We are the Wild Sphagnum Hillbillies. <laughs> Our systems included two identical subsystems, which we called East and West, according to where they were located in the greenhouse. West was our control, and the East we would later stress. Each system was comprised of four tanks. We established each of these four tanks according to our understanding of pond, marsh, and stream ecosystems. Our stream ecosystems mirrored natural ecosystems through creating the highest aeration, turbidity, and water flow. We originally planted our fish in the streams, but they migrated through the siphons. Our pond ecosystems contain the most sediment with many macroinvertebrates, less aeration than the streams, and more water to surface area exposed to the air. And plants were located along the edges of the tanks. Our marsh systems were comprised of smaller tanks and cylinders. These contained the highest density of plant matter and the lowest amount of surface area out of all the tanks. These conditions mimic natural conditions in a marsh. Once the subsystems were assembled, we collected a variety of vegetation, sediment, and various aquatic species. Places we visited included Centennial Woods, the waterfront, various puddles, marshes along Spear Street, and so on. For the next couple of weeks, we continued to seed and observe growth deaths, and the bewildering complexity of life evolving. As our systems matured, we were able to identify some plant and animal species. Among the plant species we found were numerous varieties of duckweed, moss varieties including Polystrichium juniperinum, a reed grass, Phragmites australis, Mysotis scorpioted, an aquatic forget-me-not of the snowflake variety, water lettuce, Nymphaea maricea chromatella, a lily, many ferns, a small hemlock tree, a canna lily, cattails, and so on. Among animal species we found were a caddisfly larvae, sculpin fish, snails, tadpoles, zebra mussels, a leech, many macroinvertebrates, caterpillars, aphids, and a slug. Once our machines were thriving, it was time to begin the experiment of adding stress. We chose biodiesel out of curiosity as to whether it would actually harm the ecosystems or become a possible food. We applied it to the East Stream system so it could flow through and affect the rest of the East subsystem. This was done weekly in small amounts, and in total we applied 150 milliliters. Although it did not seem to kill anything, it did disintegrate our plastic dispenser, interestingly. We did notice some changes. The water was significantly murkier in the east stream system, and sediment concentrated around the plant roots. All our fish were accounted for. Other than oil pools on the surface, we couldn't see any major harm. At this point, we invited John Todd over for his expert opinion. First off, uh, your systems are wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Now tell me about the stress. Um, well, it wasn't maple syrup. But. It wasn't maple syrup. <laughs> well, this we designated as our western system, and this is our east system. Um, so we decided to stress the east system because it had the best plant life, and you can see the oil sitting on the surface. But our stress is biodiesel. Your stress is biodiesel. Yeah. That's a good one. Well, the water is murky here. Yeah, my first reaction is this one is absorbing the shock, but it's taking hits. Uh, you're, you've got, it's so healthy with your vegetation and your mosses and your duckweeds and everything that it's, it's, it's surviving and, and doing well. It's, it's, 
now getting down to work at, uh, at treating your waste. Um, your equal machine is so powerful that it's using it as food and breaking it down that way. With his help, we came to the conclusion that the biodiesel was acting as a food. That said, a further study of our system of with higher volumes of biodiesel may result differently. Unfortunately, the end of the semester came quick, and with it the time to deconstruct our systems. We passed on some of our floating moss mats and plants so they can be used in future eco-machines. In conclusion, every great work has a story, and this is ours. Thank you.